and things like that. Psalms 127, verse number 1, the Bible says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. And so again, in in, uh, this series that we've been doing in our Sunday school hour, we've been teaching on the home and how to build strong homes and what it is to have a strong biblical home. I tell you, America's uh, a mess because our homes, we've let our homes deteriorate. Amen. With this, the reason now we're battling uh, transgender bathrooms at Target and all of this nonsense going on in the world. Why is that? Because we've not been focusing and building strong homes. But I tell you what it is as well. Look there, uh, except the Lord build the house. You know, some do focus on building the home, but when you leave God out, you're not going to succeed. Amen. Except the Lord build the house, look, they labor in vain. So I stress that every Sunday school hour for us to remember that if we want to build a strong home, we have to have God involved. Otherwise, the Bible says our labor is vain. It's empty. It doesn't mean anything. You could go through your entire life, do it and do it and do it, but if you leave God out, you labor in vain. Ask the schools. They pushed God out a long time ago and look at their labor. It's been in vain. They've gone downhill ever since. Ask the courts. Ask the, ju- uh, the judicial system when they pushed God out of the White House. Look at where our country's at. You know why? Because when you try to build something without God, your labor's in vain. And God does not put His hand of blessing upon it. And so it's the same with our home. When we want to build a, ho- a strong home, we have to get God involved. My dad used to tell me a long time ago, he said, it takes three to build the home. It takes you... Your wife and the Lord. Amen. So let's remember that. All right. Um, we're going to open up now to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to get right into the study. This, uh, this morning the study is on the relationships of marriage. 1 Peter chapter 3. The relationships of marriage. And when we get there we're going to read verses 1 through 9. And then I'm going to pray one more time. I didn't pray uh, before we got into the lesson. So if you get there, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 9, and let's pray one more time. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, again for the opportunity to teach the Word of God. Would you please bless this morning, Holy Spirit, and just please use me to uh, preach your Word and your truth. Nothing, uh, nothing more, nothing less, Holy Spirit, would you give me uh, your mind and your heart uh, and your thoughts on these subjects, Lord, and would you help it to be a blessing. May we learn something this morning. We love you, Father. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life, for dying on the cross. What a blessing that it is, Father, Lord, to be able to be saved. And I pray if anybody this morning, Lord, doesn't know you as their Savior, that they'd come to know that today. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 9, we're going to study this morning the relationships of marriage. We talked about last week how to love each other and how the Bible gives two different commands for the husband to love the wife and for the wife to love the husband and the roles that there is in that. Now today we're going to learn on the relationships of marriage. Uh, Let me show you 1 Peter chapter 3, we're going to read verse 1. The Bible says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be one, by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, and holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are there, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. And so, this chapter deals with a husband and wife's relationship. We're going to see the very first relationship in a marriage. In a marriage, you have different relationships according to God's word. There are different, uh, and as far as different facets of how a husband and wife are to communicate. The first thing that we see here in in verse number 1 and verse number 2 is that you notice it says the conversation of the wives. And then it says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. 
The first thing, a first relationship a husband and wife have together are they are conversationalists. This word simply means more, it, it, it means more than just talking. It's, it's more than just having a conversation because uh, Lord knows uh, us men, we can have some good conversations, amen, and uh, we, we can solve the world's problems all in one. If, if somebody would just listen to us men, we, we'd have it all done. But it's more than just talking. It's more than just conversing. It's talking about your entire area of communication, not just talking, but how you live, talking about your everyday life, talking about how you react to one another. This is the conversation, the lifestyle, if you will. And so in, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, we see a truth here, and, and this isn't part of the lesson, but look there, that if any obey not the word, talking about the husbands, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. God says that a wife can have such a conversation or such a lifestyle that if her husband is not saved, that the husband can look at the wife and be won to Christ by the influence of his wife. A lot of wives have, you know, that are that they come to church and maybe their husband doesn't love the Lord, their husband's not saved, and boy, they pray and pray and pray. And I give them this verse and encourage them to let them know you can win your husband. By your conversation, your husband will see the difference made in you, and he'll say, you know what, I, I, I want that. And a lot of husbands have been won by the conversation, by the lifestyle of the wives. And so the first relationship that we have in a marriage is a conversationalist. This is how you react to one another. God's, uh, uh, but it also involves talking to each other as well. So in a, in, a, in a marriage relationship, you should be well-read. You should be knowledgeable. You know, have a conversation. Be able to talk to each other uh, and be able to uh, have time that you, you spend time alone just talking. Uh, you know, when you're dating, uh, for uh, Zach and Mariah here, when you know when you're dating, what's, what, what do you just want to do? You just want to be, you know, you, you want to just be alone so you can just talk. Because you want to get to know each other. You want to know what she likes, what, she, what, 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 what pleases her, what, what is her mind, what does she believe, what is she, what, you know, what, what, what you want to understand that person. Well, when we get married, you shouldn't stop having those conversations. You should continue to converse. You should continue to t have time where you sit down, you talk, have time that you sit down together and talk about the Bible, talk about the messages that are heard from God's Word, and stay continually to, continually to converse with each other. Sometimes uh, if we're not careful, uh, we can get married and then we never talk to each other again almost because we, life gets busy. Let's be honest. We work, we, we have children, we, we begin to get to where we we don't have that dating conversation anymore with each other. And God says, have a time where you talk to each other. Spend time uh, together and then spend time apart from one another so that way you can come back and have a conversation. Um, if you, you know, know something about each other, know something about if a man enjoys golf, the lady ought to know uh, what a divot is. You know, I, I'm a golf guy. I don't know if anybody else likes golf. Uh, I'm not very good at it. One time I was golfing. It was so funny. My dad, and this isn't part of the lesson, but it's funny. My dad took his golf in a beautiful golf course, and my dad can hit a ball pretty, pretty good ways. And so my dad takes us, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to golf. He says, come on, son, you want to golf? And I said, yeah. So he paid for me to golf. So we're sitting there. And this is one of those golf courses with houses on either side. You know, this is where, like, you don't play unless you can hit it straight every time, you know. So these houses on either side. So I'm standing there. I remember golfing. I get down there. You know how you're supposed to do You put the thumb straight. Anybody a golfer here? Brother Ken, you golfer? Anybody? Oh, okay. So you put the, Brother Garraway, so you put your thumb straight, line up, you know, get your feet shoulder width apart. And, uh, you know, and then you got to do it just right. Bend the knee, you know, keep it straight and all that good stuff, you know. So I hit this ball. Mm, and I'm looking straight. I'm like, where'd it go? All of a sudden, I hear this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so dad gets it. He's like, get it, get it, get it. And we just took off in that cart to the next hole. He said, just watch me, son. And I was like, yes, sir. So anyway, but we had a good time. So those are things I tell my wife, funny stories we have. And those are things that you want to do as a husband and wife where you can come and enjoy talking with each other. A lot of times a husband and wife, they miss the joy of just talking about their interests, talking about things happening. Talk to each other. Find time to conversate. You should be a conversationalist, but not just in talking, but also in your life. Spend time together uh, con conversing as far as reacting with each other. Your lifestyle should interact. Go to the store together. Go shopping together. Do all those things together. Number two, this is the second relationship that we have. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 8. The Bible says, Finally be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. So God tells us to love as brethren. The second 
the second relationship that you have, if both are saved and born again, you're also brothers and sisters in Christ. You're also a brother and a sister in the Lord. God is our Father. We're the child of God. And so as a husband and wife, if we're both born again, we're also a brother and sister in Christ. This is a relationship also when you have a brother and sister uh, on, uh, that's a physical brother and sister. It's a protective relationship. It's a relationship of support. When uh, the sister needs help, the, the brother's there to stand up for them. When the sister needs, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, if you've had a sister, you understand, whereas a brother, you know, you're there to protect the sister. You know, you're, you're the man. You know, you, you help the sister, you, you, and you have time together. A brother, and, and so God says the same way. We're compared as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we should, at the same time for our wives, treat her as a sister in Christ. And so, basically, how you would treat other people in the church should not be better than how you would treat your wife. And for a wife, how you would treat another brother in Christ should not be better than how you would treat your husband. In fact, it should be more so, but you ought to treat them as a brother and sister in Christ. Why do we treat each other and try to, and try to get along? Because we remember that Christ dwells in us, and how we treat each other is how we treat the Lord. How we treat each other as brothers and sisters in, the, in Christ is how we treat God. And God says it's the same way as a husband and wife. We're also brothers and sisters in Christ. So how you treat your wife is how you treat God as well. How we treat, uh, our, if a wife, how you treat your husband is how you're treating the Lord. And so God says to remember that you're also brothers and sisters. Uh, treat each other as you would the Lord. Treat each other as what you know what Christ would want you to treat each other, to remember that relationship that you have. Number three, keep moving. We're all, uh, uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 19, we're going to go here real quick. Mark chapter 5, verse number 19, we're going to read this. You can write that down. Mark chapter 5, verse number 19, the Bible says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the, shame, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And then we're going to go to John chapter 1, verse number 12. John chapter... Oh, that was Matthew. I'm sorry. Everybody's looking at me like, what are you doing? That was Matthew. Mark chapter 5, verse number 19. I wondered. I was like, that wasn't the verse I wrote down here. Here we go. Mark 5, 19. I'm sorry. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And then John 1, 12. So I apologize. There we go. John chapter 1, verse number 12. Here we go. John chapter 1, verse number 12. The Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And then we won't go here, but read this. But John 15, 14, Jesus says, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So all of those verses, we, we read all of those to help us understand we are the sons of God. When we get saved... We're sons and daughters of Christ. But Christ also tells us in John 15, He says, Ye are my friends. So not only are we to Christ, the sons of God, we're related to the Lord. We are heirs. Uh, God is our Father. But Jesus says, Ye also are my friends. And so with your wife, yes, you're related. Yes, you're married. But you should still be friends. You should still have a friendship. Friendship is one of the strongest bonds in the Bible, and we ought to include that within our marriage relationship as well. You, your best friend in your life when you get married ought to be, besides the Lord, ought to be your spouse. Amen. Same with the Lord. God says to us, we're His sons, but Jesus says, ye are my friends. We're related to God, we're related to Jesus. But yet, and, and spiritually, but yet Jesus calls us His friends. And so your wife, yes, you're related but you can't look at your wife and say, well, these are my friends and this is my wife. <laughs> no, your wife should be the best friend you've ever had. Your husband should be the best friend that you ever had. Because the friendship is something that you, is a strong bond that you share. You share things with your friends that you really don't share with others. You share things with your friends, sometimes you don't share with your parents. Let's be honest, we've all done that. We've told our friends something, don't tell my mom, don't tell my dad. You trust a friend. You trust them with everything that you have. When something comes up, you call a friend. Sometimes you call a friend before you'll call a mom or a dad. And so your wife or your husband ought to be that friend, ought to be the greatest friend that you ever had. 
You should never make a friend greater than your spouse outside of your relationship, especially for a husband. Never make a friend of another lady outside of your spouse. A wife should never make a friend greater than her husband of another man. That's where you get into trouble. Your husband or your wife is your greatest friend. And America's gotten into problems because we have a friend on Facebook or we have a friend on social media that will go and tell everything about our husband or tell everything about our wife to and complain and cry and, 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 they're, another, and they're the opposite gender. And then we think, well, well, they have something my husband don't. I'm, I'd rather be with them. And then that's where we get into trouble. You're, you ought to be friends, the greatest friends that you've ever had. That's, but to be a friend, you, you have to spend time with each other. This is where that conversing with each other, that conversational is. You can't be a friend uh, be, and, and never talk to each other. You know, I have a great friend uh, from college, and, but, you know, we, I, I call him uh, here and there when I get a chance to, but we have to, keep, you know, we call and we talk together. Uh, we may not get to always be around each other, we don't, but he's, he comes through sometimes. We'll spend dinner together or something. You know, it's a great friend from college that we, uh, we prayed together, we read the Bible together, and we still uh, win souls together. But, you know, we have to keep that friendship strong by talking, by doing things together. But I do that with my wife as well. This is the thing. It's, it's funny to me, if we're, if we're not careful, a husband or a wife will plan to do everything else with their friends and then the wife stays at home or the husband stays at home and feels neglected. If you have a choice between spending time with a friend or spending time with buddies or sisters out shopping or your husband or your wife, you ought to choose your spouse. Amen. Now, nothing against spending time with other friends and having that time away from each other, but never take that away from your spouse. Amen. Next. Keep moving. The next thing, number four in the list. We ought to be, according to Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 25. We're going to turn there. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And we would turn to Song of Solomon. We can read there, but I'm not going to. Uh, but read that sometime. Read the book of Song of Solomon. It's nothing but a big love letter from a husband to a wife. And so a husband and a wife, the next relationship that they should have should be devoted lovers. You should love each other, devoted love to each other. It's a love that expresses unconditional devotion. Your mate should know that you're committed to them and only them. Take time to show each other love. Devote your love to each other. Uh, a wife or a husband should never have to question uh, their love for each other. Be devoted lovers. Amen. Spend time showing each other love. This is why, you know, I think it's funny how that, you know, when we go out, you know, and, uh, you know, these, uh, 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 the gay couples and things like that, because we were out at the store, uh, out at the Riverfest actually the other day, and, you know, they don't mind trying to show each other their so-called love. They don't have a problem with it. But when a husband and wife goes out and kisses or something, everybody makes a big deal about it. Hey, when you go out in the store, Reach over just every once in a while and just give her a, just give her a big one. Amen. Just, just, just give her a big one. You know why? Because you ought to show that you love each other. Amen. The world should not question. But you notice when you read Song of Solomon, they loved each other. The, and I just finished, a, 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 or I'm just starting another book uh, that I, I try to read and, and read a book. And, and it's a book by uh, Dr. Hiles about uh, marriage is a commitment. And he talks about how in Song of Solomon, they showed each other their love all the day long whether they were in public, whether they were at home, whether they were here. Show your love to each other. Devote your love. Amen. Be willing to show that in public. Be willing to, you know, to go and, 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 and show that love. Hold hands. Walk down. You know, it's, it's funny how you know, we always see you know, a, 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 an older couple. Maybe they're walking down holding hands and everybody goes, aww. Amen. And they do that for me. You know, I, whenever I'm going down the store, I try to hold my wife's hand. And we had somebody the other day. Uh, what it was is Zach was with me. We went and... Uh, uh, went to the dump and I had some scrap. Man, metal's down. That's terrible. I went to go do some scrap and uh, I had a, you know, a couple big things I thought, you know, my dad had given to me. I tried to see if they would work and they didn't work and uh, uh, so I took them down and scrapped uh, some tin. You know, I got three bucks. I was like, what on earth? I was like, I might as well not even come. That was a waste of gas. And th well, $3.50, excuse me. So I was like, 
I thought, I can't even buy McDonald's with that. Maybe, a, you know, a drink or something. But and, uh, So we go there, though. But my wife went in with me to, you know, you, you give them your license and do all that, you know, how when you scrap. And uh, so we're standing there, and uh, this, this guy walks in. He goes, is she your sister? <laughs> I said, well, she's my wife. He's like, oh. He's like, y'all are kind of young. And I said, yes, sir. Well, I said, I'm 24, and, uh, you know, Sarah, she's uh, 20 now. And uh, this one lady back there, she goes, Y'all are so cute. She said, I ought to make a poster of y'all and hang it up. Y'all are just so adorable. And I thought, I thought, well, thank you, ma'am. You know, no. But, you know, when we were in there, you know, the reason they kind of figured something out was, you know, I would hold my wife's hand or i put my arm around her because this one lady was walking up and uh, she uh, at the counter and she was like, uh, they saw my dad in the system is what they did because my dad's been there too. And they're like, did you used to have glasses? And I was like... Now, that's my dad, Richard Sr. And she goes, okay, I thought so. She's like, but you're the better looking one. Boy, you should have seen Sarah. I thought, boy, World War III, amen. And, uh, but you know what I did? I reached around, hugged my wife, and I thought, mm, you know, like that. And uh, I made sure to show my love to my wife. You know why? Our, our mates need to know that we're devoted to them. They should, never have, they should never have that question, amen. Devote your love to them. Show your love to them. And, uh, and be willing to fight for your love. Amen. You know, a wife, don't be happy if another man comes up and compliments your wife. Deck him in the nose. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, you know, if you come up and compliment my wife, you're going to jail. Amen. And uh, I'm going to take you there myself. I'll probably be in there with you. But don't you compliment <laughs> my wife. I mean, that's my wife. Amen. Be willing to, dev- you, that devoted love means you fight for that love. You know, this world is all about, they don't, they have no respect for a ring anymore. They see a ring on a finger, and to them that means nothing. They still try to steal your spouse. Know that the devil's still trying to steal you from each other. The devil's not happy that you did it God's way. The devil's not happy that you got married and you made a vow to God and to your wife to stay together in love for e- for, forever. The devil doesn't like that. And so the devil's throwing people out at you to try to break up a marriage. You think I'm crazy, but it's in this world. There are people that will try to steal your spouse. That devoted love means you ought to fight for each other. You ought to look at somebody and say, excuse me, that's my wife. Don't you ever say that again. I, I'm not against it. I've done it. I've done it. And, I, and they didn't mean to, but I tell them, so don't do that. I, a guy one time walked up, put his hand on my wife's shoulder. I thought, excuse me, buddy. That's my wife. <laughs> and uh, so I, I've done it before. You ought to fight for each other. Fight for that love. You know why? Because the devil's out to destroy it. And the reason that we have a bunch of in, in, in unfaithfulness is because spouses don't know how much we love each other. Fight for that love. Be devoted lovers. Next. We'll move on. Got to (laughs) go. Titus chapter 2, verse number 4. Titus chapter 2, verse number 4. The Bible says, "...that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children." Again, when we talked about last week, this is another kind of a love. We're to be romantic lovers. Again, we could go to Song of Solomon, but for the sake uh, also of children, we won't go there. But Titus chapter, uh, in, in Titus chapter 2, verse number 4, and you read Song of Solomon, they weren't just devoted lovers, but they were romantic lovers. In other words, uh, don't be afraid to be romantic with each other. Spend time together. Uh, husband, plan a, plan a romantic date with your wife. Hu- uh, wife, plan, a, plan to have a romantic time with your husband and, and enjoy that time that God has given. Listen, God made a husband and wife to be together for that. Amen. That's not, there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Enjoy that. And uh, put, that, put that spark in your marriage, uh, so to speak, amen. Don't be afraid to do that. Husband, when you uh, were dating your wife, you remember when you, plant, you planned uh, that romantic uh, candlelight dinner and, you know, you went somewhere and you bought her her favorite dessert and you brought her a, a big old bushel of red flowers. And I remember when I first told my wife I loved her, uh, we, I bought her a big old thing of red flowers and, uh, you know, I uh, wrote her a card and they hand it to her from the pulpit and stuff. Pastor Gray, he said, hey, this is for Sarah Clark. And uh, so Sarah got this big old bushel of flowers with this little card in there that said, I love you. And boy, she turned around and looked at me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> her face got beat red as those roses. And I thought, score. <laughs> 
got it. And then we went to dinner a little bit later, and she told me she loved me too. You know, it's romantic. You know, be, be that way in your marriage. Plan those times. Uh, relive those times. Take your wife back to where you had your first date. Take your wife somewhere or, where, or the same restaurant. Buy her those flowers. Write her the same card. Your handwriting may look a little bit worse than what it did, or maybe it looks better. In my case, my handwriting still uh, is improving. Uh, but be romantic with each other. Next, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2. The Bible says, well, we're going to start in verse number 1. The Bible says, Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. This word espoused here uh, means partners. God has espoused us as a church to Christ. This is talking to the church. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. And he said that we are espoused to Christ. When we get saved, we're put in the family of God. You get saved, you're given, you're put in, you become God's son. You're put in the family of God. When you join the church, you get put into the church of God. The bride of Christ is what this is. And so we're espoused as a church... To one husband. That's why God got mad at the children of Israel because they were espoused to God the Father and they were turning to idols. And God got mad because He said, and He said, You're not, you know, you, you, you're supposed to be espoused or partners with me, not anybody else. And so the same with us. We're espoused to Christ. Well, as a marriage relationship, because God compares the marriage relationship to the church in Jesus Christ, we're partners. With, with each other in a marriage relationship, which means like you would be in a, in, in a business or maybe uh, in, a, in a, any kind of a union, you're partners. That's why when you join the church, you partner. You become, you become a partner with this church. Each party in a marriage is to be a vital contributor to the marriage. When you begin a partnership, you both have to make a commitment to each other. You both have to hold up your end of the bargain, your end of the deal to make it work. No one person can make a partnership work just like no one person can make their marriage work without the aid of somebody else. So in other words, in your marriage, if you both aren't working to do your part, then your marriage will fail. In other words, if a husband is always concerned about whether his wife is doing her job or if the wife is always concerned about whether the husband's doing their job, then they're going to leave their part neglected and a marriage falls apart. It's not your job to keep your husband right with God. It's not your job to keep your husband the man that he ought to be. Not your hus it's not your job to make your husband the, ro the biblical role model that he needs to be. Likewise, the husband, it's not your job to make your wife walk with God. It's not your job. Now, you're to walk guard as a husband. You're to protect the family, but it's not your job to make her the wife that she needs to be. Uh, honey, you're not doing this verse. You need to do that a little bit better. <laughs> wife looks at him and goes, uh, excuse me? <laughs> Did you read the verse before that? <laughs> Work on each other. Work on yourself. Worry, stay in your own backyard, so to speak, when it comes to a marriage. Work on your part as a husband. I'm working to be the best husband that I can be, and the wife works on to be the best wife that she can be. And what you'll find is there is a great relationship because both are happy. He's being the husband he ought to be because he's working on doing that. She's being the wife that she ought to be. And where discontentment comes in is where we try to fix each other. Well, how come you don't do this? Well, how come you don't do this? Well, how come you don't do this? Don't worry about that. You worry about yourself. That's where you can say, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not the husband I should be either. That's where humbleness comes in. But a lot of times we argue and fight because we don't want to admit, boy, we need to work on some things too. Be a partner in your relationship. Put the effort in to be what God wants you to be. For your spouse. That's why we talked about in the loving each other. You have to love each other, but you have to work on the love that God wants you to give to your wife. It's a specific love that God wants to give a husband to the wife and that God wants the wife to give to the husband. It's specific. You've got to work on it. Next, we got to move. Number four, look at Romans chapter 12, verse number 10. Romans chapter 12, verse number 10. 
I love how the Bible... You see, and we use all these verses because the Bible compares, again, the church to a marriage relationship. When you get married, you don't just live together. That's not marriage. Marriage is when you come together at an altar and make a commitment before God and your spouse to keep yourself to her and only unto her. Same with the church. It's a beautiful picture. We come and commit ourselves. We join ourselves to the church. And what happens is, is we can see the, how God wants us to uh, react in the church the same that we ought to be in the home. And the picture of the church should be a picture of the home. It's wonderful how God does it. It's just like when you come, when people get married, you can't just live together and then you're married. Not even in the law's eyes. You can't do that. Okay? You can live together. That's your decision. But you're not legally married. So same sometimes with the church. There's people that come and they come and they come and they come. And that's great. And they're allowed by all means. But until they make that commitment to God and to the church to join and become that partner, only then do they really enjoy the relationship that God has for them. That's how that works. And so we see here, Romans 12.10, look, it says here, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. So in a church, we're to be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. I would, I would reckon this, and this is the next relationship a marriage a couple ought to have, when you in honor prefer one another, it's like you would to a guest. You would put your guest first. You prefer the guest to have the best of everything. They're given the choice of what, uh, what they would like. They are given the first piece of chicken, amen. They're given the best room in the house, uh, usually, amen. They're given the choice uh, when, what bathroom that they would like to use. Or if a guest comes, you try to make a guest feel welcome. Well, in a marriage relationship... Uh, just like in a church, we're to prefer one another. We're to help each other feel welcome. We're to uh, allow each other to, you know, treat each other uh, with this kindly affection. So a husband and wife, I, I would call this uh, a host and hostess relationship. Just as you would host a guest or as a church, we would host a visitor and we would direct them, say, this is where this is, this is where this is, and help them and show them and prefer them and be kindly affectioned unto them and brotherly love. The same ought a husband and wife should be. You ought to prefer your wife before anything else. You ought to help her. Uh, you ought to be willing to say, hey, is there anything I can do for you today? Uh, it, it, you know, how can I be of a help to you? Uh, you know, treat your mate with the dignity and sweetness that you would a guest. You know, treat your mate as you would, as you would host, a, you know, walk your wife to the car. Let her put your arm in there. Open that door. Let her in and say, here you go beautiful, you know, or here you go, princess. We were walking down the river fest the other day, and uh, we were sewing and handing out some tracks, and uh, uh, it was just yesterday with Brother Garraway. Uh, of course, uh, he skipped out on us, but we, uh, we, we stayed and did right for the Lord. <laughs> now, uh, we were walking down the river fest, and this uh, couple with all their kids, but the couple had, a, had some shirts on. They said, uh, he said, I'm her king, and then her, she, her said, I'm I'm his queen, and on the back it said, you know, I love my crazy wife, love my crazy husband, you know, that kind of thing. I, I walked by, and I said, hey, man, Nice shirt. And he goes, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you could tell it was one of those. He bought that and got a brownie points. Boom, you know, and uh, they're walking together. I'm with her. I'm with, you know, that kind of stuff. It was funny, you know, but what it was is they were learning how to show each other love by treating each other special, you know, and that's just like you would have guessed. You know, treat your wife special. Uh, help her to the car. Help her with the groceries. Help her do those things. Also, a lady, help your husband. Every morning, I tell you, I, I love my wife. Every morning I get up, I have a cup, cup of coffee waiting. Boom. I tell you what, praise the Lord. You want to get to a man's heart? Well, for some of us, amen, if that, that are right with the Lord and love coffee, amen. And, uh, <laughs> no, but I love coffee. Every morning, my wife has a cup of coffee waiting in the same spot. Let me tell you. That's love right there, amen. That is true love, amen. So just so you know, get him coffee every morning. There you go. And, uh, you know, and, and I have things that I try to do with my wife. And uh, I'm just joking, okay. Um, I try to do for my wife. Host each other. Be willing to, uh, as you would a guest, you know, treat your wife with that same, uh, treat your husband with that same mindset. We get so, we get, uh, we allow this world to get our mindset to where, well, I just live with her now. We just lived together for so long, you know. We're just, 
we're, we're, it's just my wife, you know, it's, it's just my husband. No, you know, make that special. Let people see that you open the door for her. Let people see that you help and, you, and, you, and, and let people call you adorable, <laughs> as they did to me the other day. You're a cute couple, and I, I was laughing. But, you know, I try, to, I try to do that, and I'm not perfect at it, Lord knows, uh, but we ought to treat each other that way. Get that mindset. Look there uh, back in uh, 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9, the Bible says, Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise, blessing. Know that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. So in other words, God says, don't render evil for evil. Don't be sitting there trying to bicker back and forth. Well, you did this to me, so I'm going to do this to you. You know, a guest, you know, when a guest comes to your home, they may uh, not screw the toothpaste back on or they may leave the bathroom a little bit of mess or, you know, when you go to a hotel and, you know, you leave your bed a mess and then the, the hotel fairy comes in and makes your bed back up for you, but by, by, you know, you just left for five minutes and all of a sudden the bed's made again. You think, how on earth? And uh, them some fast ladies, they go in there, you know, and they don't complain. You could leave it a wreck and boy, you come in and it looks good again. Do the same with your wife. Do the same with your husband. Maybe, uh, you know, it's been, you've been married 10 years and he still misses the hamper. <laughs> Maybe you've been married two years, uh, like myself, and you still leave the top of the toothpaste off the thing and uh, don't put it back in the drawer uh, where it's supposed to go. So that happens. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. We've gone through this. You know, it happens. But, you know, the best thing that we can do is treat each other as you would as a host and a hostess. Don't constantly rail on each other. Look at that. Or railing for railing. Don't rail on each other. Boy, how come you just don't do better? Boy, why do you do that? We've been married how long? You still uh, don't rail on each other. Amen. Now, nothing wrong with talking. Amen. But railing. Don't railing for railing. But look, but contrary wise, blessing. Look for the good in your marriage. If you constantly look for evil, you're going to find it. Look for the good in it. Praise each other. Bless each other. Give each other the, the blessing that each other deserves. Wife, tell your husband how handsome he is. Uh, 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 husband, tell your wife how pretty she is. And constantly look for blessing. Constantly look for, you know, now do your part. It doesn't mean that we're allowed to just neglect our responsibilities, but, you know, we all make mistakes. But as you would a guest or a friend, and maybe they don't always do as they should or leave your house a mess and you think, I'm never having them over again, no. And, uh, you know, things like that. As you would clean up after your guests when they eat a meal and take their plate from them and clean that for them, let them sit there and enjoy, treat each other the same. Amen. So these are the different uh, relationships. And again, we could go through and there's more verses, but these are just some, uh, some ones that, uh, again, that I've gone through, studied, and, uh, and, and things like that that I think would be a blessing. And I tell you, if you would put these to practice, I promise you, your, your marriage would be a better place. Amen. These are, these are principles that have been tried long before me. I, I can tell you, I've been married two years, so I can tell you how to stay married for two years so far. Amen. But these are principles from greater men than I that have been married 30, 40, 50, uh, some 60 years. Amen. These are some things. And again, I study them and try to apply them, and I hope that they're a blessing to you. Take them home and, and apply them. Take them home, study these verses, work on how you treat each other uh, during the day, and I promise you, you'll have a relationship that people will envy. Amen. You ever see those people where they walk down and you go, man, I wish I had that. You know, well, people will do that with your marriage. People will think, boy, you know, I wish I had the relationship that they have. Well, I wish, you know, uh, we were sitting together one day, uh, my wife and I, on the couch, and uh, we're not. I'm, and again, I'm not bragging because we're not perfect, but it was just, it, it was just, we just did it. And my wife and I, uh, we sat. I sat down on the couch. She scooted close to me, put my arm around her. You know how you do, and uh, you know you pinch uh, her arm or something. She kind of, you know, it's, I don't know. It's fun to me. Don't do this, but uh, <laughs> y'all aren't married yet. Can't do that. Sorry. But, you know, we just kind of did that. And somebody looked at us, and they, they, they've been married uh, for a little while, and they were like, boy, we should do that. <laughs> and I thought, oh, man, you know, don't lose that, you know. And, and it was a blessing. Then I, finally, I saw them reach over, and they held each other's hands, and they started to kind of cuddle with each other just as we did. Make your marriage something that when somebody sees you, it reminds, it reminds them of, hey, you know, we ought to do that. Hey, you know, let's keep that alive at our marriage. Amen. I promise you, your marriage will be a great place. All right? Well, it's nine. It's actually a couple minutes past, so we will pray and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you again for the Sunday school hour. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord. We get to come and learn from the Word of God and, Lord, the principles 
Lord, that have been taught down from generation to generation, Lord, and, and just many things from God's Word that, Lord, we can take and apply. And, Lord, may you help us to, Lord, have stronger marriages, Lord. I have a burden, Lord, for that, that, Lord, our marriages would be strong, that we would love each other, Lord, that you would build our homes, Lord, that we would focus on you. Lord, I know I'm not the expert, Lord, on marriage, and, Lord, I've only been married for two years, but, Lord, I know that these principles by greater men than I, Lord, can help and can help us, Lord, and we know and through studying God's Word, Lord, we can do something great, Lord, with, with our marriages, Lord. And, I, I, and I, I desire that for my marriage, and I pray that, Lord, uh, we would also, uh, the others here, Lord, would desire that for theirs. May we focus on building our homes, Lord, with you in it. Lord, we love you. Bless the next hour to come. Bless the morning service. May Holy Spirit, you speak to us in a special way. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.